Hi there and welcome back, where today I'm going to talk to you about the new Unlucky Morpheus song, The Black Death Mansion Murders, that just came out. And if you're thinking, wow, that is quite a title, it is a dramatic title, the sort of thing that you could only really expect from a band like Unlucky Morpheus, a band who I have massive respect for their musical talent. Now, I've often had various musings on their songs, some I like more than others, but one thing you can't deny is that they absolutely have pinned down that sort of theatrical nature and both from the thumbnail and the title of the song you can really tell that they're leaning into that here. Now I have commented before how I'm not a big fan sometimes when you have those metal bands who can't, well they take themselves too seriously, they can't laugh at themselves and they sort of do songs like with titles like dragon death satan murder and like long haired always looking like really angry with their sort of biker beards. Um, you know, sometimes if a band takes themselves too seriously, it's kind of hard to really not laugh a little bit. But when you've got a band like Unlocky Morpheus, they're, it's not like that at all. They're more leaning into this visual K aspect of Japanese music. Now, if you're not familiar with visual K, basically imagine if someone said, um, this is an entire genre of metal created by Tim Burton. That's effectively, if you imagine that, that's effectively would give you visual K. And primarily, as the title suggests, it's primarily a very visual sort of genre in that, um, you know, it leans very much into the dark, the macabre sort of area of things, but with a sort of weird creativity, a sort of out of this worldness that makes it slightly strange, slightly colourful in a way that it doesn't ever, it feels more like a sort of cartoonish darkness, and yet at the same time comes across with a sort of real atmosphere and an intensity. I do really think that example, um, Visual K basically being a Tim Burton genre of music is very true. <laughs> and it goes across though as well into the actual music itself, in that you get this music that is, it kind of has a seriousness to it, but it's so bombastic, it's so over the top, you have such orchestral swells for everything, that very often you, um, you can't help but sort of be taken by the sheer enthusiasm of it all. And you know, Again, this is a genre where I don't really, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of a lot of Visual K artists sometimes, because I think sometimes they don't quite have that sense of uh, creativity you really need to pull that off. But Unlucky Morpheus are one of those artists where they have musical skill, writing chops, and it just so happens that they've lent into, they sort of, um, they, they're sort of straddling into this uh, Visual K aspect of things. Um, I think they're more than just a Visual K artist, they're a very good artist who just happens to play through that kind of lens. And so that brings us to songs like this one, The Black Death Mansion Murders. Now, when it comes to this song, we have most of what you would expect from the sort of uh, melodic metal side of things. Um, you have obviously Fuki's voice, I have longed to buy the fact that I know many people, there's a lot of split on her voice. I think her voice is absolutely beautiful. I know sometimes she goes into slightly unusual styles with the way she throws her voice and maybe how she uses tremolo. I really like it. Um, I think that she's just got a very unique sound, beautiful voice control for me. She's doing a great job, but she's doing this big melodic um, melody that rolls over the top of everything else. Underneath, you have the guitars, as always, doing big, you know, sort of chugging along and having their solos. The solos in this are really fantastic, um, you know, beautifully played and delivered. And you have the drum beat doing what is pretty much the style, which is just hammering away insanely fast with double kicks and everything. And this brings me into a strange place because I've said about songs like this before, um, referencing things like. Um, Love Bites and also uh, Lonesome Blue had the song Parallel World quite recently. Those sort of melodic uh, metal songs where the drum beat's going super fast underneath and then the voice is doing a much slower melody over the top, they can work in this really nicely counterbalanced kind of way. But actually this song reminds me a lot of Parallel World by um, Lonesome Blue, although that song's actually kind of like a cheery upbeat metal song, whereas obviously this is going for a much darker um, sort of message, a darker tone but they both have a vibe of being very much concentrated on the melody. Both have really nice melodies. This song probably even more so. More so. I loved the melody to this song. It was so engaging. And what I found was after I had been listening to it for quite a while, it, well, not even that long actually, maybe after probably the first minute, maybe not even that, I started realizing that actually the vibe I was getting from this song was not something of really wanting to rock out. I found it quite soothing. It was quite calming, quite a sort of 
therapeutic song. And suddenly it occurred to me why. As I listened to it, the guitar, with exception to the solos, was turned down quite quiet. The violin was turned up quite loud, like we heard in that um, Lonesome Blues song. And the violin was very beautiful as well. And so what I really noticed is that really, I was listening to Fuki give this nice sort of almost semi-operatic performance, really singing beautifully with these long melodies and the violin adding detail. That's what I was listening to mostly. And then underneath the bass, the guitar and the drums, the drums because of the fact they were going so fast, were just providing this kind of smooth layer that everything else went on top of. There was also a certain degree of compression that came in there as well. I'm not one of those people, I'm not anti-compression. I think if it's used properly, it's fine. And it's used in pretty much everything anyway, so it's very hard to be anti-compression in recording. Um, but, you know, I've got a whole video about compression if you want to check the explanation of what it is in case you don't know. But that sort of audio compression, it stops like any sounds in any particular instrument or uh, an arrangement bursting out and suddenly going loud, quiet. Like if you hit a guitar, the, the note goes loud and then dies down. So you had the drums were kind of compressed, so no hit was particularly loud. Everything was just kind of all in this nice sort of rumbling rhythm, which was so fast it became almost like a massage for the ears. And then you've got the guitars playing, it's chugging, but it's kind of staying this nice um, chord pattern is basically this thick volume underneath quietly staying there in the bass. And it's just the fact that everything was providing just a soft layer on which the violin and the voice provided a sort of a beautiful, uh, layer for you to really focus on. Of course, the guitar solos came in occasionally, but the guitar solos were very nicely, rather than just sort of being twiddled for the sake of it, which is where I think guitar solos are most annoying and a lot of Visual K bands go into that, hey, look how fast I can play area, which is kind of boring. Um, this was something where it was, you know, it was playing off the melody of what the vocals have been doing and playing off the violin a lot of the time. So the guitar almost came in to support those pre-existing two leading factors of the song rather than to try and just shamelessly show off. And for me, I must admit, I just felt that this became more of a relaxing ballad that just so happened to have extremely fast double kicks, constant chugging guitar, guitar solos and all of that and a dark theme about death. Yeah, I don't know whether this channel just made me into some sort of dark and morbid person. <laughs> yeah, so the weird thing is, is that the whole vibe, like I say, that I got from this song was one of a melodic, kind of beautiful piece that was very relaxing and easy to get into. It had some little changes and things along the way that just slightly, slightly altered the rhythm just to stop it becoming too much like, you know, just too, too, if you like, monotone and boring. It had little changes in the pre-chorus and such that helped to um, have a little bit of uh, movement as it went along. But ultimately it was just a nice, soothing opportunity to listen to some beautiful violin fantastic voice of Fuki and have the rock chops given by the occasional tasteful guitar solo and a very nice layer of rock band underneath. Not perhaps the review I was expecting to give, but there you go. Those are my thoughts on the Black Death Mansion Murders by Unlucky Morpheus. Don't try and give us a title that a roll of the tongue, why don't you? So that's what I think. As always, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys say in the comments. And until I hopefully see you very soon for the next one of these from Japan for now, it's ciao, ciao.